Okay, so it's the Academy Awards. Yeah, it's been a bit of a hiatus. Um, I've been away and then I was sick for two I've weeks. Just been sick. Yeah, uh, so it's been a while since, since we've been uh, doing this. But, uh, and it was, we were supposed to do this sort of Academy Awards. Um, like a pre-show. Pre-show yeah. and picks and sort of not, um, guesses on yeah. who was going to win and so on. And I did it on my own, and you'll have to just to take my word for it, but I got like 20 out of 24, although I missed most of the really important prizes. Um, I, I picked the wrong movie for the best picture, and I picked the wrong movie for best direction, and so on. But, but yeah, we'll be talking about uh, the best picture nominees, mostly. No, no. Just go as briefly as we can, which won't be brief at all, probably, but go through them and and think about how we rate them in terms of the of the what was actually the best movie of the year and yeah, so on. Yeah. I might be going off the rails in a few few moments talking about Meryl Streep and Transformers, but um I do yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's not sorry about it either. Uh, a little bit, <laughs> a little bit. Um and then just uh then just briefly talk about um, a, a couple of the other categories, but but we'll be focusing on best picture because it's going to be a long show anyway. And, and um, but I I I just want to say that I think that I've seen all but one of the best picture nominees, and I I I I strongly un encourage you to see see the movies that were nominated. I think it was a it was a pretty good year. It was. It in, was. in terms of um, in terms of the nominations for best picture, I don't know about the rest, but I th I thought that there mm. were some there were some re really good worthwhile movies to yeah, see. Yeah, and really good performances by yeah. actors yeah. and actresses. Okay, we're talking about the Oscars. Yeah. How was it for you? Uh, the ceremony itself? Uh, or? Yeah, I think all of it. Just um, I think um, as a ceremony, it was okay. I, this year I decided to sleep, because in Finland we, they show it live, but it starts like 3 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So I slept a few hours before and I woke up 15 minutes too late, so I missed the opening monologue. Mm. And I watched it afterwards in, uh, from YouTube. And, but because I missed the opening monologue, it's sort of because that sets the tone for the rest of it. The rest mm. of it is basically a bit boring. It is. The, the opening monologue sort of gets it on its way, and then you, then you sort of you build on that so that you get yeah. through the rest of the evening. Uh, I didn't have any snacks, I didn't have anything, which I usually do. Snacks are good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, so I, I sort of missed the momentum a bit. Mm. Um, and and I, I, I intend not to do that mistake again. Yeah. Uh, I thought Kimmel was all right again. Yeah, Kimmel was pretty good. Oscar is the most beloved and respected man in Hollywood. And there's a very good reason why. Just look at him. <laughs> Keeps his hands where you can see them. Never says a rude word. And most importantly, no penis at all. <laughs> he is literally a statue of limitations. And that's the kind of men we need more of in this town. In terms of the presenters, it seemed... I don't know if the presenters were as funny as they were or, or have been. I, I think a few of them really fell, fell flat. Um, but in general, it was okay. It was it, it was okay. I, I, don't, I didn't I didn't think that it was anything super special. Mm. Uh, and I was sort of thinking, this is the 90th, so uh, Buddha willing, I'll be I'll be alive when the hundredth come out. Yeah. And it'll be interesting to see if they're going to do something really. So sort of what can they really I, do? I mean, that's I the thing. Know. I don't know. But they they're, they're going to have an enormous pressure to yeah. do something. Really and isn't it true that the ratings have been going down 
for how many consecutive years now? Yeah, I, I think I think it's because nobody watches television anymore. Yeah, that was the point that um, Kimo was making on his show uh, when Trump had tweeted <laughs> tweeted about it at the. Something about the lowest rating Oscars ever, <laughs> and uh, just sad. because there's, there are no stars in this <laughs> country except for your president. I'm just kidding. Something yeah. like that. And um, Kimo was making the point that it's because of Netflix and things like that. But I mean, it's sort of. I mean, it's. I don't know. Is that really the reason for it? Because I mean, you you one would imagine, or at least I imagine, that uh, a show like the Oscars has so much prestige behind it. And such a history that it's sort of like, in a way, kind of like must-watch TV. I, I think it's. I think it sort of is. But the problem is that it's it's just too long. Yeah. They tried to get rid of a part of that problem by moving the technical Oscars, having a separate show for them. Yeah. And now even the lifetime achievement awards are not recognized. Mm. I mean, before they. I think for a few years they sort of gave them out in a separate ceremony, but yeah. then the guys who won it, mm. they were in a box. Yeah. And then at some point they just stand up and everybody gives a, a, an ovation and that's yeah. it. But mm. now even that didn't happen. Donald no, Sutherland no was <laughs> <wasn't laughs> there. Box yeah. 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 Oh, but yeah. but they're, they're sort of trying to make it shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. Now they joked about it with the jet ski thing, mm. which yeah. I thought was quite funny. Yeah, was. But but uh, but I think that, that, that that's the problem. At, in the end, most of the people who are coming out and giving sort of the, the, the thank you speeches and so on, they just aren't interesting because they're, they're thanking people that they know mm. that have been really instrumental in their yeah. career or, or, or winning that award or something like that, but nobody else knows them. Yeah. And, and to just, you know, give out a list of 20 names, that's just, it doesn't mean anything. It means hugely to them and yeah. it means hugely to the people that they're thanking. But, but the average viewer, which is going to be like 99.9999% mm. of the audience, that just doesn't register at all. Yeah, and it's, it's when you think about the award shows, I think Golden Globes is more entertaining. And there's one reason for it. It's Ricky Gervais, it's, basically. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think the reason is that there's booze. Yeah, probably, yeah. Because yeah, they, they still can't drink at the Oscars. No. So, so uh, that's what the stars themselves say, that it's much more relaxed and it's easier, basically because they're a bit buzzed no. all night long and mm. it, it creates better television. No. Um, and the thing about it I have to touch upon is this... Um, I think Ellen started it when she was hosting the Oscars. This when what she ordered pizza or something like that, and then took the selfies. And now, what was it that Kimo did? Uh, she went to the theater. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. they're trying to sort of like up the ante yeah. on that sort of like an interactive sort of thing, and it's yeah. But the, but the thing is that what you were saying about the prestige thing is that the, I think that's part of the problem, that it's a bit stale. It's mm. old world hollywood uh people dress up and then they, they there's this great great um finnish word mm. which basically means this you know people standing around stiffly and not being able to be themselves and so mm. on and it's a very forced kind of artificial yeah, yeah. environment and i think that's that's part of the reason because they have to they have to appeal to a huge wide audience mm. uh if you have Ricky Gervais at the Glo Golden Globes, they, they know that there's going to be something controversial mm. there. And the, and, but the Oscars can't do that no, because they they're, they're trying to, 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 to appeal to a much wider audience. Yeah. And it's a daytime show mm. and so on and so on. So it's, it's, it's really difficult to make... Because um, edgy co comedy is usually funnier. Mm. And you can't be very edgy in, in, in no. the Oscars. Plus, it's very political. It's, it, there's a lot of stuff that makes it even more serious because the, the, the acceptance speeches and so on, there's always somebody making a point about, about minorities mm. this, or, or, or the, the, like this year it was the women, women in Hollywood mm. and, and so on. So those kinds of things always, because it's a, it's a political platform as well, that those kinds of 
things tend to also take it to a direction which isn't that entertaining no. necessarily. No. It's actually the, 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 um, uh, the acceptance speech by Frances McDormand was interesting with the inclusion writer word that yeah. she used or this, uh, I don't know, it's two words basically. But, um, and it's an interesting idea when you think about it. Because when you look at like uh, these huge hits like Get Out and then Black Panther and Wonder Woman, and all of these movies are not constructed in a way that is part of the norm of how Hollywood makes movies, and they're hugely successful. So there's like there's a lot of demand for more like um, more inclusive inclusive movies. Yeah. to be made and I actually read an article about tier the chain owners saying that they really want like they would like to have like an Asian superhero and uh, and all that because the viewing public is diverse so it makes sense that the movies would reflect that.